All right, so the first thing I do with the brakes is uh, all the bladder screws, which are usually pretty rusty. You can see it right here. Uh, shoot them all with PV Blaster. You got uh, another one here. And uh, I'm going to take the caliper off now, and there's uh, half inch bolts on all, both sides. And uh, another thing to keep in mind, I can show you a quick tip. I like how that is, it's pretty rusty. Now, oh, I got this loose, so that's why it's moving around, but move that out of the way. What I like to do is uh, you wrap on it with a hammer a couple times. Sometimes just doing that will loosen it up. Knock the rust off. And you can see there that it's all plugged up. My bleeder screw for the rear brake. Uh, I'll let that soak in uh, PV Blaster or WD-40, something that'll loosen that up. I'm going to go ahead and take these off. Once again, you remember what I said about buying somebody else's project? <laughs> you guys got to get a kick out of this. There are no brakes. <laughs> I don't know why the guy took them off. So, it's another thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to spray these cylinders, clean this all up, so that way I can push that in. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I'm going to push that cylinder in, make sure it's free. Um, also, going to go through the uh, the master cylinder. There is no fluid in there, and this is kind of a goofy setup. So I'll probably have to bleed the master cylinder first, go through the whole brake system, make sure all the old fluid is out, and go from there. Alright, now if you look at that, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to tap on that with a hammer. She's pretty rusty, so I'm going to take a wire brush or a wire wheel, clean up around the edges, because that will help too, for everything up. And uh, hopefully I can break that loose. If not, I'll be uh, just disconnecting the, the line and bleeding it the other way. Um, I have a video on how to do that and I'll post the link for that. Alright, so I got pretty lucky with this one. I wrapped on it with a hammer, got my little wrench on there, and I got her loose. So, usually what I like to do is take that bleeder all the way out, clean it up, Yeah, there's corrosion in there, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up, clean, make sure that uh, fluid will come out of there. And then uh, also, uh, when you're installing your brakes, there is a nut on there with an Allen wrench. Unbolt that, and then uh, this thing, you can push all the way in further to get your brake pads on. Just a little tip for you. And I'll do the other side the same, get the brake pads put on, and then I'll start bleeding. Um, generally what you want to do is start from the back if you can. Get all the uh, air out of the lines, um, any uh, old fluid that you got in there that might have condensation and water mixed. Bleed that out, and you go ahead, bleed your right one, and your left one, and you should be good to go. So. Stay tuned, we'll see how this works out, see if I can't get that loosened up and uh, get some fluid out once I get my brake pads on. Alright, so I'm taking that the bolt up. Now keep in mind too, you can use this to adjust your brakes too. And what I like to do is take a C-clamp and make sure that piston will move in. As I'm turning it, you can see it's pushing in. These like to rust up. So before I put my brake pads on, I'm pushing this all the way back in. Plus it'll be easier to put the brake pads on. And that way you know everything's going to function properly. Um, I did a brake job on a guy's scrambler and his brakes locked up. He couldn't figure out why. Well, his pistons had corrosion just from it sitting for a while not being used. And all I did was this. I uh, bled the brakes, pushed the pistons in, I freed them up with some PV Blaster. Or WD-40 or you know whatever you got, brake clean, that even works. 
and uh, yeah, it was good to go. So keep that in mind. All right, well, I wasn't gonna go this far, but I figured while I got the brakes off, uh, I pulled that nut out. I'm gonna inspect the hillard clutch right away and make sure the the plate is smooth and nothing's damaged there because I noticed this was a little wobbly too. All right, so as I look inside, there's, I don't know what the hell this guy's got in there. But there was water in there, you can see it's uh, a little rusty. Flat off. Yeah, there's a lot of rust. This is the most important part. I'm gonna make sure this clutch is, there's a plate back here. I wanna make sure that that is flat. Because if that is damaged, your four wheel drive will not work. All right, so I pulled that clutch off. And here's that metal plate, and that is your uh, magnetic coil. This plate grabs onto that when you flip your switch on, and it turns turns the clutch. It grabs the clutch and spins it. Uh, as you can see here, this is all cracked. You can see in the light. Here, let me get you a better shot. There's cracks everywhere. Uh, it's all busted. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that right away. Um, like I said, I've been working on these for a while, probably two years now, and <laughs> it just so happened to have a, a bin of clutches laying around. Lucky me. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and put that in. Uh, now this plate, like I said, you want to make sure it's flat. It looks pretty good, but I'm going to double check it. Maybe I'll pawn it with a hammer, make sure it's flat. It's got a little curvature to it. And uh, so if that's not flat, that's not going to grab on. And uh, the magnetic coil will not do its job. And then your four-wheel drive won't work. So like I said, I wasn't planning on going this far, but uh, we're doing brakes. You might as well check out the hubs, right? So why not? Alright, so I got my hub all back together. I do have a video on that too. It's pretty much uh, nothing I don't have a video on. <laughs> um, I can post a link for that if you want to see how that's done. But uh, yeah, um, not only was this cracked, but somebody must have did some work on this once before and forgot to put the bearing that goes behind this in there. So I had an extra bearing. Now she spins nice doesn't wobble anymore uh, once I get uh, everything back together you take that out with an Allen wrench and you can uh, fill up your hub fluid um, you can use um, ATF automatic transmission fluid or you can use the Polaris brand um, ATF works fine I'll top that off because you got a fluid in there or your Hillard clutch won't work and your four-wheel drive won't work either so now I'm gonna go ahead I got my uh, my brakes in, my brake pads in, and I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this back up, and we'll start bleeding the brakes. All right, just to give you guys an idea of what I mean by this uh, Allen wrench on the back here, uh, I had this turned in too far, and uh, once I I put the caliper on, this would not move. It's tight, so I'm gonna back that off a little bit. And that's going to give your caliper some play and now she moves so that's what that uh, little nut is on the back of the caliper so there is adjustment there just to keep that in mind um, and I'll go to bleeding the brakes next alright so I did top this off but uh, it was looking pretty nasty in there so just so you know when you bleed the brakes you don't want to squeeze this all the way back. You just want to go back and forth just a little bit. Watch your fluid. Let's see bubbles come out of there. You don't want to go all the way back. You just want to feather it just a little bit. Let's see bubbles going. Let's see the nasty stuff come out. So I'm going to go ahead and crack open. Uh, the back brake valve, the back bleeder screw, and I got pretty lucky. I, uh, like I showed you, I wrapped on it with a hammer, let it soak with a little PB blaster, 
and I got to crack open. So what I like to do is put a little rubber hose. Um, you can use uh, <laughs> any line like this, that actually works pretty good. Put it in a jar filled with brake fluid and uh, squeeze your brake lever back and forth. Watch everything push out. See all that uh, dirty fluid. Best part about that is you can leave that cracked wide open and keep pumping your your brake lever back and forth and no air will get in because uh, you got a jar full of brake fluid in there. As long as that uh, hose stays in there you're good. And then you go ahead and you tighten it up and uh, the back will be done. And I'll show you how that's done. Alright so here we go. I got my hose going from the bleeder screw into a jar of brake fluid so no air will go in or out when I crack open that valve. Uh, also keep in mind while you're pumping the brake lever that you don't run out of fluid because uh, if you run out of fluid you're going to start sucking in air and that's going to be bad then you're going to have to do this all over again. So I'm going to crack open that valve <coughs> and like I said I only just want to go back and forth just a little bit on the, on the brake lever. There's a little piston in there that moves back and forth between two holes. You just want to go back and forth slow just to get the air out. Start squeezing the brake. You might let too much air in. So just do little by little like that. I'm going to crack that bleeder screw. See how much air we get out of here. There you go, you can see the fluid coming out now, all the air is coming out. Watch that hose, it's filling out. Keep an eye on your fluid in the reservoir. Alright, so I got a lot of air in all my lines. So, that's not going to pump up tight yet. So, but I got the air out and I got some dirty uh, brake fluid out. So now I'm going to start on this one. We're going to crack that valve. Same setup on here. Going in there and I'm going to crack the valve open and start squeezing the brake. I should watch all kinds of air coming out of there. All right, Fluid should be filling up but I don't see it coming out so I might have a uh, I might have some air in the master cylinder. Alright, so uh, I'm on the third, the final brake, and it, this is must have been my problem. There's all this dirty crap coming through the line. Uh, when I was uh, squeezing the brake lever, uh, hardly anything was coming out, so something must be jammed in there. And now finally the reservoir is actually dropping. Now as I squeeze the lever, you see bubbles coming out. And the fluid's actually filling up in the jar. It's getting all that old dirty fluid out. Like I said, I'm just squeezing this back and forth. Just a little bit. I found some dirt in the reservoir, so I had to make sure to clean that out too. This might take some time. You know, this isn't going to be like a one-shot deal. You might have to go back uh, all the way around because so once you get the air pumped up tight you might have to start from the back and redo it all the air is out of the lines all right, I'm not seeing anything pump out anymore Let me check that line and then uh, I might have to start from the back again. This was a clean jar and uh, it probably doesn't show up in the camera too well but I've got chunks of dirt uh, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that out and fill that jar back up with fluid again because um, it sounds like there's uh, crap stuck in the brake lines. Alright so I went ahead and bled the system um, with no success. So. What I've got is i got uh, fresh fluid going through all the lines, but uh, the master cylinder is not uh, putting pressure to the cylinder, so 
in the calipers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and I'm going to bleed the master cylinder. You look over here, down here, it goes to a T. You can see that. So I'm going to disconnect it right down here just to make sure there's nothing in this line. And I want to straighten out this line. That's all goofy. Um, I do have a bunch of extra masters in here. Like I said, I got a collection of parts over the years. So that ends up being bad. I'm going to replace it with that. Last and most important thing is once you get this reinstalled, get your fluid in. Don't forget to bleed your master cylinder. I've got uh, uh, a bleeder set. Uh, you can get that at any automotive store. You just got to go on down into a jug of brake fluid and I'm gonna start squeezing it. I'm going to start squeezing the lever and watch the air bubbles come out. See it's working, pushing the air out. Squeezing this back and forth. So you see bubbles in there. This might take a while. Well, I'll just keep uh, going back and forth so you don't see any more bubbles. And I am going to top off the fluid. Keep going. So that's a good sign that it's dropping. That means uh, fluid is going into the jar. That means it'll push it through the brake system, which that was a problem I was having before. Was the cylinder didn't go all back all the way. And it wasn't pushing the fluid through. This is what I was trying to show you before. Pumped everything up, cracked the bleeder screw, and watch all that. Ooh, she's pumping up finally. Yeah, that's good. She's working. Pushing all that air out. The brakes are starting to grab finally. Check my fluid level. It's getting low. I'm going to top it off. Always got to keep an eye on that. If you start sucking air, you're going to have to start all over again. Oh yeah, I can feel the brakes tightening up. Air is pushing out. If I turn this down, it's tight. Yep, it's tightening up. That's good. I'm going to tighten up that valve. Here we go. I had to set the camera on the tripod. I'm going to squeeze the brake lever and see what we got. Oh, yeah, she's tight. Yep. I finally got brakes. Yeah. All right, so you saw my little trick. There was no back bleeding. Uh, a lot of guys use a syringe or uh, that Mighty Vac, which I have no faith in. It never worked for me. Um, Hope this helped you out. Um, it's kind of a long process for me because my master cylinder didn't work. But uh, hopefully it's something that uh, you guys can check into. So uh, there you have it. That's how I bleed my brakes. A um, couple different methods of doing it. Oh, and one more thing. So it turned out the brake line, the real curved up one that was up by the master cylinder, turned to be pretty rusty at the end. And uh, I was blowing air through here and nothing. A little bit was coming out, but not much. So that was telling me there was some rust getting into the mass of cylinder. That's probably what wrecked it. And let me show you one more little trick. Now you see this setup I got here. This is like off a 99 uh, scrambler. It's got the newer style hose. Uh, like I said, I went to the, uh, the hardware store. And I just got an adapter. It was a quarter inch to eighth inch and uh, tighten up my line and like I said you uh, if you do that you can pr pretty much put any master cylinder you want on there and when I say br master cylinder I mean the whole brake lever so keep that in mind if you want to change something out and like I said uh, 
In my uh, previous video, I, I have used motorcycle brake handles before. Uh, I used uh, I bought a used one off a of katana, and she worked pretty good. So here she is. I got her all done. Um, keep in mind that after you do a engine rebuild, um, what I like to do is I uh, like to pre-mix the gas and the oil. I usually go uh, 32 to 1 or 50 to 1 in the tank, and uh, that'll help break in the engine. You see my brake setup. Brakes are good. I got my new seat cover. I uh, ordered a custom seat cover and uh, installed it myself. Add a little flare to it because plastics aren't that pretty, but. Hot wired the fan so I don't have to worry about anything overheating. Alright, there you have it. One complete 96 Sportsman. Two stroke. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit thumbs up if you like the video. And subscribe. And like always, till next time.